Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. Now, in today's part 12, we will talk about systems of linear equations. But before we start with that, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. Okay, as I said before, the topic of today is linear equations. And you know, in linear algebra, we want to solve such equations. And you will see, the matrices we introduced in the last video will help us in this process. However, before we do that, I first want to start with a simple example. For this, I want to choose two persons and let's call them Xavier and Jasmine. Simply because then we have the letter X and the letter Y. Now, the first statement I tell you is that Xavier is two years older than Jasmine. Of course, this is something you can put into an equation. Okay, then the second statement is that both persons together are 40 years old. And then the overall question is, can we solve this problem? Can we say how old Xavier is and how old Jasmine is? And of course, in order to answer this question, we should translate both statements into formulas. The first one just means that x is equal to y plus 2. There, x represents the age of Xavier and y the age of Jasmine. Therefore, the second statement just means that x plus y is equal to 40. So what you should see here is that we have two equations and two unknowns. Moreover, these questions here now just mean do we find values for x and y such that both equations are satisfied? So we search for these values and we would call them a solution for this system. In addition, then we could ask, is this solution unique? However, before we try solving this system, let's look at another example. And there, let's introduce more unknowns and more equations. And because we could have a lot of unknowns, it's not feasible to just use x and y as variable names. So usually we would go with indices like x1, x2 and so on. Therefore, our first equation here could be 2 times x1 minus 3 times x2 plus 4 times x3. And in our case, this should be equal to minus 7. Okay, and then let's introduce three more equations. And let's make it well arranged and let's write the variables at the correct position. For example, here we have the equation minus 3x1 plus x2 minus x3 is equal to 0. And then the next equation should be 20 times x1 plus 10 times x2 is equal to 80. So in this equation, we have 0 times x3 at this position. And finally, in the last equation here, I want to omit the first variable x1. Well, so this is our system. And in summary, we see we have four equations and three unknowns. Indeed, here we can ask the same question. Are there some values for the unknowns such that all equations are satisfied? And again, these values we would call a solution for the system. However, for us here, the most important fact is that all these equations here are so-called linear equations. Of course, the term linear makes sense when we do linear algebra, but what does it mean for equations? Indeed, it's not complicated at all, because we already know we only have two operations, scaling and adding. First, this means the unknowns we could call x1 to xn go into the equation in plain terms. So there, we don't have powers, square roots or other functions involved. However, it's allowed that we scale the unknowns with fixed constants. So in other words, different numbers can come in here. And then the second thing we are allowed to do is to add the scaled unknowns. Okay, so these are the things we can do to the unknowns and then we can set this equal to another constant. And there you see, this is the rough definition what a linear equation is. However, the term system of linear equations is so important that I really should put this into a separate definition. 
In fact, this will be a very lengthy definition, but it's not complicated at all. Now the term we define is simply called a system of linear equations. And often we abbreviate this with LES, linear equation system. Actually, there are a lot of other abbreviations one uses, but I will use LES for short. Moreover, from above we already know we have two numbers involved, namely the numbers m of equations and the number n of unknowns. Ok, and now for the formal definition here, we just have to give the constants proper names. Now the first constant I just call a11. Then the second constant stays with the 1 because it's the first equation, but then it gets a 2 for the second variable. So you see, it's a good system because we can continue it until we get a1n. Ok, and then finally we have the right hand side which is also constant and now we call it b. And here I call it b1 because it's the first equation. Hence, the second equation looks almost the same, but now we have a 2 here in the first component for a and a 2 for b. And there you should already see, we can continue this whole procedure until we get to the last equation, the mth equation. Ok, there we have it. For fixed numbers aij and bi, this is what we call a system of linear equations with n unknowns. So you see, we have a lot of variables, but only the x's stand for the unknowns. The other ones are just fixed real numbers. And later we will see we can also choose complex numbers for them. However, first we will keep it real. And then, as before, we can talk about solutions of the system. It's simply a choice of values for the unknowns such that all m equations here are satisfied. In fact, the most important thing here is that all equations are satisfied at the same time. Now, as often when we talk about solutions, two questions arise. The first is about the existence of solutions and the second about the uniqueness. And both things we will discuss in detail in later videos. However, by considering simple low dimensional cases, you already see that a lot of cases could occur. For example, we could have the case that no solution exists at all. And this fact we could visualize in the case that we have two equations and two unknowns. Then we know from previous videos that such a linear equation just describes a line in the plane. Hence, in the case that both lines are parallel, we don't find a combination of two numbers such that both equations are satisfied at the same time. In short, no intersection point means there is no solution for the whole system. On the other hand, this then means that we can also visualize the case that we find the solution and this one is also the only one. In other words, it's possible that we find a unique solution for this system. So in the picture, it means there's only one intersection point. And then you might already guess, the third case is that we find a solution, but it's not unique. In fact, later we will see that if this is the case, we have infinitely many solutions. Hence, for our simple example here, this would mean that both lines actually coincide. However, in the case that we have more equations and more unknowns, the picture could look more complicated. Nevertheless, these three distinct cases are the only ones that can occur. Therefore, from now on, you really should have these three cases in mind. Ok, now for closing this video here, I want to show you a short notation we can use to denote a system of linear equations. And maybe it might not surprise you that this is a matrix notation. So the idea is, instead of writing the whole system here with m equations, we just write it with one equation. So we simply write a, a matrix a, times a vector x, is equal to a vector b. So you can see it as a short notation for the whole system here. And of course, the matrix a here is defined in such a way that the coefficients lowercase a are the entries of the matrix. 
And of course, what we want is that we have exactly the same order of the coefficients. And on the other hand, the coefficients on the right hand side, we can put into a vector b. So you see, this all makes sense, it makes it shorter, when we also put the unknowns into one vector x. However, then please note, the size of the vector x could be different than the size of the vector b. Therefore, I think it might be helpful to use our example from above to explain this new notation here. Here, please recall, this here was our second example in the introduction above. Hence, now we know our matrix A is a matrix with four rows and three columns. And of course, we can just copy the numbers from the left hand side. And you see, the good thing is, we have to put in the zeros at the correct positions. Okay, there you see, here in our case, this is the correct matrix that represents the left hand side of the equations. On the other hand, the right hand side is represented by a vector b, where we can also fill in the correct numbers. So you immediately see, the whole system of linear equations looks much cleaner in this short notation here. However, of course, we don't lose any information at all. Therefore, from now on, we will always write linear systems in this form. Okay. Now, when you just compare the left-hand sides here, then you see that this new notation here introduces a new multiplication. Indeed, we say that this is the matrix vector product. It means that we calculate a matrix times a vector and what comes out is a vector again. In fact, the definition of this new matrix vector product is not complicated at all. It's very natural, because it's given by the scaling and adding on the left hand side. Now, to denote this new multiplication, we could use a dot, but usually we omit it and just write AX. However, one important thing you should immediately see here is that this matrix vector product is only well defined if the width of the matrix A is the same as the height of the matrix X. Okay, then I would say, let's continue talking about such new products in the next video. So I really hope that I see you there and have a nice day. Bye.